overcapitalizing on your first investment property. Now, this is a mistake many people make in their early phases of investment, and that's overcapitalizing. Now, let me tell you an example of that. If you're looking to buy property and you start to renovate, um, it's exciting, and yes, there are potential opportunities off the back of it, but unless that renovation has a core purpose to create substantial income, when a boarding house comes into play, that could be one example. Um, but usually when people jump into their first few investments, getting into renovations might not be the best idea, unless it's those strategies I discussed. Why that's the case is, imagine you've got 50,000 or 75,000, you're thinking of doing some, substa some substantial renovations. Now, when you're looking at it, if your intentions are to go in, then hopefully get your money back and more. That could work out, but at the same time, what if I told you you could keep it where it is, let it do, it, let it do its thing, and then use that money towards a new investment? Because 50 turning into 80K or 50 turning into 90K is not going to be as powerful as 50 buying a 400K new property to add to a total position of wealth. So this is where renovations or overcapitalizing in your property, I feel should come at a later stage. And this is where I like to divide a portfolio into two stages and sometimes even three. Stage one is all about acquisition. Use your dollars to buy more properties, let them be as is, so you don't have to have the risk of a renovation project costing too much, or a risk of a renovation project taking too long, or that project where you go into there and when you do get your dollars out, the valuers don't see it the same way. But on resale, it could be the same, but on valuations, it might not be the same. And so from that, what happens is that you go into building a property portfolio and you're never able to commit your dollars to acquisition. And we all know that person with the greater amount of properties that equal a dollar value that's higher will always win even if their performance is less than the person who has less properties. Why? If you have a $1 million portfolio and a $2 million portfolio, even if you had half as much growth rate to begin with at your $2 million portfolio versus the one, it's kind of similar results. For example, 10% gets you 100K and 1 million, 5% gets you 100K at 2 million. So for the first few years, you are really winning over here, even with less growth. So from that perspective, the risk is lower when you acquire more, because when you acquire more assets and you are heavier in the acquisition phase, even if performance varies, you'll still have this good compounding effect happen over time. And this is where overcapitalizing can stop you from building out a portfolio sooner. So if you were to commit that dollar that you keep saving up towards new properties during the acquisition phase, when you get back to optimizing, you can start looking at your cards and go, well, I've got this property, that property, this property. I feel okay with what I've put together here. Now I want to chip away and renovate this, improve that, and maybe it increases rents, it optimizes it, or you start having repairs and maintenance decrease a little because you've redone certain areas, optimizes it, or you've been able to revalue properties and they've increased it, optimizes it, you see? So this is where capitalizing or overcapitalizing on a property at the start, unless you're looking for those type of renovation outcomes discussed, it's usually best placed for later on.